the women's part of uh, the show. Was there anything else I, that was really standing out, Matt, in, in Roadblock? Oh, um, of oh, course, well, we, had, we had Neville. Um, yeah. Show. What, what did you make of that, Matt? Was you expecting that and you know, that play well for you? Uh, no, I can't say I was actually <laughs> expecting that. It was a kind of surprise. Um, not kind of the position I was like hoping for. I mean, mm. I was hoping for a bit more of a spectacular return then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, Neville, I mean, at least I suppose it looks like they're going to give him something a little bit, you know, he's not going to be just Neville running out and, you know, it, this might help him uh, a little bit. But, uh, you know, I, I do worry about the whole cruiserweight thing in general. Um, but hopefully, um, you know, this this will add something to the, the roster of that division anyway. Um Past that, Matt, was there anything else that, that came out before the, the women's? I'm trying to rattle my brain. Yeah, you know, the women's things left such a big impression on my mind. It's kind of coloured everything else. Yeah, <laughs> there, there might have been. But listen, what stands out, the talking point for me. Um, now, the, the, the women's match, of course, the whole story going into this was Charlotte, of course, had, you know, got an amazing record. Well, she's got the record, hasn't she? Was it 14 before she went in? Of yeah. Consecutive... Uh, now. Oh, okay. So 13 consecutive pay-per-view wins under a belt. And, of course, Sasha was the one that always dethroned her on, on the Raw after and etc., etc. Um, and, you know, I know, I know a couple of weeks ago or a week ago, Matt, we, we were talking about it and we said, you know, like, they could do this where it helps both of them and, and maybe a draw would have been the the kind of ideal kind of thing or some sort of shenanigans. But... As far as, first of all, Matt, like the match itself, was you impressed with the match uh, for getting the result, first and foremost? Uh, because, of course, it, it was another feat for the women's division. Uh, you know, they, they've gone through hell in a cell, these two. Now they, they, they go in a, you know, an iron women's match, I guess, if you, if you want to call it that. Um, what, how did that go for you, Matt, the, the, that kind of uh, the match? Right, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Um, well, they're always, they're, they're always pushing the women's division now, I guess. And they're always saying it's a first. It's a first hand to sell. And they're making it sound like this is the first Iron Women match. But this, this is not. This is the second. We saw this with Bailey and Sasha before. Yeah, yeah. Um, good point. And I don't mind if they do whole new things and make both women look good. Um, but I don't really think they did push the boundaries on this. I mean, it, we knew Sasha can go 30 minutes in the match anyway, because mm-hmm. uh, we've seen it before in NXT, and they made a big deal of telling us that she had to go through special endurance training to do this. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, but anyway, I, even after that, I, w- I was so disappointed at the, the end of the 30 minutes, though, because it's the same thing we saw with her against Bailey. you know? Like, oh, right until the last second, then... She, like, only a few seconds beforehand, then she's going to tap out, you know, and, and lose a point. Um, I would have, you would have thought, like, when the women's title means that much to you, you would hold on for three seconds. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I didn't like the way they told the story in that way. Uh, but I think everything else they did for the match was pretty good. It was a good match if it wasn't for the bad ending. And, you know, sudden death, trying to bring back nostalgic memories from Brett and Sean and that, but didn't really do it for me. Hmm. Yeah, I, I um, you know, the, the whole build-up, like you say, Matt, I, I was kind of thinking, hang on a minute, we've already done this. Um, but, you know, I, I tried to hold my my mindset in that. And, and the match itself, you know, it was, it was, it wasn't, it, it was good. I think it, it done what it needed to do. But similar to the Hell in a Cell, too much was about making this sort of history thing and, their rivalry and all the rest of it, like ending like this, and you know how it was going to all sum up. Like, I hate that. I think it should be more about why are we here? Why do we need to get to this point? And that's why we're having the match, rather than it be this is this is a history thing and what we're doing. You know, like by now, I wanted to see pure hatred between these two, and I I kind of feel like they. You know, this rivalry is as much as we'll look back at it, and, and it is going to definitely be one of the greatest uh, women's feuds there's been. Now, I'm not. I will say one thing, Matt. Uh, what ha- what Bailey said on Raw the night after, I, I totally was uh, blowing raspberries when she said that about it being the best rivalry of two women ever. Um, 
was slightly a little bit overdone for me because yeah, it, it's been it's been good and they've set records, but I just felt like there hasn't been they didn't get it to the point, Matt, where both of them utterly, utterly detest themselves to the point where this 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 whole feud had to go on for that long. Uh, they had to have so many of these matches. Um, it, it, that didn't that never come across to me, which is kind of unfortunate because Charlotte done such a great job, Sasha done a good job, but there's been such a like uh, interwining problems in this program um, that you know too much about this history making stuff uh, all, all along the way, um, and I felt like they they've overdone it slightly. So. I kind of feel like I wanted it to be like, you know, Brett and Austin somewhat. I wanted them to get to that level or Austin and Sean, uh, sorry, Brett and Sean or even Austin and, you know, that kind of thing where they just cannot stand one another. But I, I just felt like sometimes it, it kind of come across as, you know, very, a little bit too scripted somewhat. Um, but, um, of course, the result is what people were talking about more than anything and the fact, Matt, that um, Charlotte walked out uh, 14, of course, now consecutive, um, and of course it it done um, well. Of course, you get one person over that. There's no doubt about that. But then the other person, Matt, um, is somewhat stranded. I mean, that's I don't know if I if I like it or not. I mean, I I don't. I I'm, I'm going to say this much. I don't think it's awful. Because I think there's room for Sasha to come back in a different way, where maybe she's going to be a heel um, again. Um, so I don't think it, it it destroys her in that way. The only, but the only thing I will say is is that I I do feel that WWE is somewhat. Um, I think that they they kind of knew ahead of time, Matt, that Sasha and Charlotte were going to be doing this for that long, and they were kind of filling in a big gap. Um, somewhat, uh, because it has been all about them. What did, what did you think? Because you're, you're obviously the Sasha Banks fan, and obviously you seeing her lose the title again at pay per view, um, not 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 great, I'm guessing. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not going to say too much negative about her, but it, it gets to a stage where I have to say, is WWE doing irreparable damage to Sasha's image? Um, they make her look like an incredibly weak champion. Uh, like she can hold the title, she can win it on matches where it isn't that important. You know, I'm not saying a women's match isn't important, but when you're on a Raw, that's just a Raw match. Um, but when it gets to a pay per view, they make her look like a paper champ, like she can win it but can't defend it. Um, and that's not a good image to have as a champion. Uh, and when they got to the, the, the time limit draw on the Iron Man match, I, I get that the point that there was like supposed to be an end to this, but if they just called it a draw and said it was a draw, I think. Sasha would have benefited more from holding the championship mm -hmm. because she could have had the championship and then Charlotte could have still had the record that she's undefeated in pay-per-views, mm -hmm. you know, and she could have carried that on 14, you know, and then Sasha would have had the title. It would have made both women come out of there looking good. Yeah. Uh, but the way they did it, no, it just looked really bad for Sasha. And although I would like to see her come back as heel, I don't really see that happening. I, I, I'm only going to have to assume that it's going to be some really run-of-the-mill kind of storyline between her and Nia Jax. Mm. Uh, and I really don't want to see that. Mm. Um, because it looks like they're really going to try and focus on Bailey because, you know, Charlotte needs to face, uh, face another face opponent. So I'm guessing Bailey's the only one they have. Yeah, um, and, and going into that, Matt, I want to talk about that now. I mean, obviously, we, we spoke about it, it puts Charlotte on a on a, a, a new level. Now, Matt, uh, bef without even going into the, the main event of Roblox, just just at the, for the minute, um, I want to I want to skip ahead to Raw. Um, Charlotte come out and she said something, and uh, I've got to say, I, I, I kind of somewhat believed it when she said she was the biggest star. <laughs> In, uh, in in WWE right now, and and I kind of was thinking, I was thinking, hang on, she's maybe got a point. Like I'm not feeling Kevin Owens is doing enough on his own. I'm I'm kind of thinking like AJ, you know, he's there, but he's not he's not been given the the, the stage that she has, and and maybe she she's maybe she is the only best protected star I've seen in a long time. Like when I've when you know I've criticised WWE a lot for this fifty fifty malarkey, but it just goes to show you, Matt, if you do put, if you choose your person 
um, and, and they've got the talent to back it up, um, especially as a heel, um, you can get that person over without 50-50 booking for sure and you give them the rub. Um, it, it can work. And, and she, for me, is is definitely a big star. Like right now I'm seeing Charlotte. Like I thought she was a star, but now I'm seeing her on a different level. Um, what, what did you think about Raw and, and obviously Bailey coming out? And th- For me, it was a little bit flat, the whole uh, promo. And I feel, I feel like Bailey was... It was almost diabolical somewhat. I mean, I, I really like Bailey, but just listening to her was a little bit like, oh, no. It really, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't really getting me jack pumped up for this. And, and I was thinking, this, on paper, this is an incredible match. But I'm thinking, why, why now? Why so soon? Like, honestly, um, what did you take, take from that, Matt? And, and is Bailey a serious threat to uh, the level that Charlotte's at at the moment? Well, you would have to look at it on paper and look at uh, Bailey's uh, sort of performance and just come up to Raw and think, not a chance. That's what you, <laughs> if you were going to do it from a logical point of view, you just look at the stats and you'd be like, well, there's no chance there. But it's just the whole formula WWE likes to play it as, isn't it? It's like, oh, it must be heel versus face. Because, mm. you know, if you was going to do it sensibly, Nia Jax is a much more deserving opponent. You know, yeah. she's come on and she's been dominant. You know, and she's dominating the women's scene. That makes more sense to me. Uh, but you know, they just look at Bailey and they think, okay, Charlotte's had to put in all this hard work, and she's had main event pay per views. You know, fifteen pay per views she's mm-hmm. been doing here, and, and fourteen or whatever. Um, but you know, and they look at Bailey and they think, just because the reaction she gets from the fans, that it's yeah. automatically going to turn the gold, whatever they throw into, and. It's not really the case, you know. You still got to put in some great storylines. You still got to put in some great work on the mic. You still got to sell this story to the fans. You can't just hope that they're going to be back in Bailey because she's incredibly popular with the fans. Uh, especially after now, like we've been watching for over like a year and uh, almost a year and a half now of what Charlotte's been putting in, and it's been consistent and uh, highly entertaining and mm-hmm. a high work rate. Yeah, I kind of feel like that. I think of. Um... I mean, I think the title is still prestigious enough, even though it's it's gone backwards and forwards between Sasha and Charlotte. I never really had too much of a problem with that, um, be, but I because I feel like both of them are so good um, that you know it, it was fine to do. Whereas if it was another title, I might feel differently about it. But I feel like that their, their matches at least were consistent enough to get that belt still recognised as, as you know and they've done an incredible job like literally since Wrestlemania since changing it over from the Divas to the to the women's they've done a they've done a heck of a job it looks like they've invested that, that time and you know they haven't it, it's one positive that comes out of this year for sure uh, is that title um, but yeah like Matt, like Matt said we, we have to I mean hopefully um I, I, I'm assuming that's a Royal Rumble mat that we'll see Bailey and Charlotte, and you know it's going to be, you know, it is going to be a, a big deal this year. It is an anniversary Royal Rumble. It is a bigger audience. So again, you know, maybe it is worth having that match there. But um, you know, where they go from there will be very, very interesting um, for sure. And you know, I guess Matt, in, in a lot of ways, if, if you think about it, if Bailey did win, that would easily cement her in a in a very big spot herself. Uh, you know, beating that record. So there is definitely things to gain um, for her, but uh, you know, you don't want to see the belt switch over too much. Um, that, that's what I will say. And perhaps it needs to be on a, a bigger stage. But but then again, Charlotte could maybe reclaim it at WrestleMania. So you know, we, we have to wait and see. Uh, Matt, let's uh, talk about the what was the um, main event of uh, of Roadblock. Um, I mean. I watched this match. I've seen the ending a couple of times now. And, uh, I don't know. I mean, Roman Reigns, first and foremost, Matt. No real change for me with the audience. Uh, it was still very, you know, negative and unnegative. I mean, call it what you want. People said, oh, it was a bit better than normal. But, you know, to be honest, I'm... I'm still not. I'm still not sold that Roman Reigns is um, is a is a face. I mean, his facial expressions they have not improved. What one I owe? Nobody. I can't believe it that that nobody backstage is saying to this guy, pulling him to one side and saying, you know what, Roman? Honestly, if you get booed when they when they kind of you know announce your name. 
don't do that shrug of your neck and laughing kind of pose like that cheeky little grin. That's that's not.